Let me tell you what's out there. Vast reaches of wilderness. Untamed. A rugged domain. Majestic. But lethal. It belongs to them. The machines. The steel beasts who rule these lands. And guard the secrets buried beneath its crumbling ruins. If you hunt these wilds, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how clever, you will become the hunted. Can you brave that challenge? Can you pass that test? If you want to survive, you have to make the kill. Only then can you bring to light the deep secrets of the Earth.
Turn back! Corrupted machines in the valley! I have to cross. I'm headed for the border. Then may the goddess show mercy. Walkers, let's have a look. I should focus scan them. Got some weak spots, but they're tough. Risky, but I need the components. Two explosive traps coming right up. Help! Help! Watch out! It's corrupted! You did it! I came from Mother's Rise. Corrupted attacked the village. Yes, and something worse. A demon! What do you mean, a demon? It scuttled from the forest. Drove a group of Watchers mad. How did it do that? I saw, but I did not understand. Oh, Goddess, protect us! Keep running for Mother's Crown, it's not far. Come with me, or the demon will kill you. I don't believe in demons, and I don't run when lives are at stake. Get out of here. You're crazy! The village. I'll never make it in time. Unless I get a mount. Broadheads. If I override one of those, that should do. village. What's that noise? What the hell is that? It's corrupting the Watcher? Vulnerable to fire. Here we go!
Where did it come from? We know. We weren't the first ones here. Our stories speak of the ones that came before. The old ones. The world of the old ones was so different than ours. They had built incredible cities with towers that reached the stars. But a darkness came, and their cities turned to graves. And without them, the land started to change. Their great cities faded away. And in their place, came new life. Over time, one by one, the tribes came to these lands. Some small and humble, some powerful as kings. They say my tribe was the first. The first to hunt. The first to raise our bows. For this world is never ours. We've always shared it. A dangerous balance between man and machine. should be full by now. Just a couple more. Oh, come on! Yes!
time to shut you down! The stories don't tell where the old ones went. They don't tell us why the machines rule these lands. But they warn us that this balance cannot last. The storm is coming. And I will be ready. Hi, my name is Mark Norris, senior producer for Guerrilla Games on Horizon Zero Dawn. And here we are, finally with Paris Games Week. We premiered Horizon Zero Dawn at E3, and at that time we only showed the behind closed doors to a number of the media members, but we've never shown it publicly. And finally, we are going to do that here today. One thing that you should know almost immediately is, yes, you can explore everything that you can see here, but we're on a quest. Now we've hidden that quest UI and that quest interface, but one of those two tribes that you saw previously in the trailer, one of them has given you a quest, and it's a quest of critical importance. And that quest is to get a very specific resource. It's a resource from the canisters that you can find on the back of this herd that we call the grazers. Now, why do you need this resource? Why does this tribe need it? What is happening in this world? Those are still things that we're going to keep a mystery. But you will desperately need to retrieve this because it's a critical part of what's happening. As you're looking at this screen, for the very first time, you're gonna notice some of our UI or our HUD elements. Now, the art on this isn't exactly final, but you can start to see how the game is really starting to creep into what we're doing. You can see in the top middle part of the screen that there is a compass. Now, we've hidden our quest markers and our quest objectives, and we'll talk about a quest here in just a moment, but you can see a compass certainly denotes an open world style of adventure. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, what you can see is the very beginning of a level and an experience bar. So you can start to see the RPG elements start to seep in. In the lower left hand corner of the screen, you can actually see our health bar. It's unusual, it's painted like an arrow. Some of the tribal influences are certainly coming into the UI and HUD, and even though the art's not final, you can expect that those tribal influences will stay. You've seen a number of locales inside of the trailer for Horizon Zero Dawn. You've seen some desert, you've seen some snow, and of course you see here the forest. And currently Aloy is crouched in what we call some stealth grass or some tall grass. Stealth plays an incredibly important part of Horizon Zero Dawn. In fact, you can see the UI element for this. Right underneath the compass is a little circle. That is in fact a stealth indicator. And so Aloy will need to wait for the right moment in order to introduce that stealth attack. Sorry, little one. So we mentioned that there are a couple of RPG elements, right? One of those things that you just saw, especially if you've got the keen eyes or if we zoom in on it, is the number 825 that just popped up. So that number 825 is incredibly important. Why? Because it denotes that there are, in fact, RPG elements hiding behind the hood. That is a damage value. We call that floating combat text, and you can see that number pop up. But now we've actually also gotten into the loot menu. Now we've described previously how important the machine parts are to the world of Horizon Zero Dawn, but here we're showing you some of those parts. In fact, that flame coil that you can see on screen is one of the elements that's required to build explosive arrows. Now, machine parts are incredibly important. The economy, the entirety of the world of Horizon Zero Dawn is built around these machine parts. So here you can see Aloy picking up what is essentially a couple of health plants. Now those will fill up your health if you get low. Uh, but the important thing here is actually what they represent. You will want to explore every nook and cranny of this open world. The ancient city, the tops of mountains, rivers and valleys, all kinds of settlements, because you never know what you'll find. Guerrilla's DNA is strong in Horizon Zero Dawn. We've talked about this game being an action RPG, but Guerrilla Games, Guerrilla Games is really known for its action. What Aloy is going to do here, she's going to use what we call the explosive tripwire. And that is really used as a trap. It can be used as a defensive countermeasure, but it's mostly used as a preventative measure. 
She knows, because she spent so much time with these machines, that these razors are incredibly skittish, that they will run off at the first sight of her or the first sight of noise. And she knows that if she's gonna complete this quest, she's gotta get those canisters. So for her, the best way to make sure this happens is to set these explosive trip wires down and try to find a way to force the grazers into the traps. So that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna set down a couple of these traps and we're gonna try and create a distraction. The machines in Horizon Zero Dawn do have herd-like activities. And here we have a species defending itself, these grazers allowing a couple of them to stick around to fight Aloy. This is the mighty Thunderjaw. One thing that you will immediately notice is the size differential between Aloy and the Thunderjaw. The Thunderjaw is 24 meters long and it's 10 meters wide. It has 93 destructible armor plates, each with its own health value, and it has 271 animations and 67 VFX. It has 12 attacks, it's 550,000 polygons. And so what we're taking a look at here is actually some of the strategic and tactical elements of a fight that Aloy will want to think about when she gets engaged with the Thunderjaw. So we're gonna take a look right here at the fact that there's actually some weak points on the Thunderjaw. As you're taking a look at the leg here, that orange muscle that you can kind of see underneath there, uh, that is also a weak point. If you're able to hit that, you're able to do four times the amount of damage that you would ordinarily do. Now the question is, how would you actually take off that armor plate? Now we give you a couple of options there, but the best option is to use the machine itself. So we're taking a look at the disc launcher right now and you saw earlier in the E3 trailer that you can shoot off the machine. Uh, you can shoot off the disc launcher, but you didn't know why we did it. The reason why we did it is because it takes a lot of arrows to knock off a Thunderjaw's armor plate. But if you can knock off its disc launcher, you can pick the disc launcher up and use its own weapons against it. And that's one of the best ways to take down the Thunderjaw. <laughs> Fighting the Thunderjaw is an awe-inspiring experience. We talked previously about the fact that it has 12 attacks. A number of those attacks that you're seeing now you hadn't seen before. It's not that it has a tail swipe and a foot stomp and a little bit of a disc launcher attack. Shooting off those disc launchers is incredibly important for a second tactical reason. It has a 360 degree absolute assault with that disc launcher that makes it incredibly difficult for you to get anywhere close to it. So you're gonna wanna take off those disc launchers. But if you are, You'll notice now it still has a rail gun and a mouth laser. So this thing's serious, even though it's previously damaged, it still has a huge amount of attacks. So what Aloy is gonna try and do here is try to find a way to tie the machine down so that she gets a brief window to figure out her next move. So that was the playthrough of the behind closed door session of Horizon Zero Dawn. We cannot wait to show you more. We're gonna show you something brand new and something huge next year. Thank you. story is very important. We're telling the story of Aloy and it's fantastic to follow her personal motivation throughout the world. We explore her origins. She is trying to answer the question where she came from, who her parents are. At the start of the game, Aloy is an outcast. She lives with the tribe, but sort of in an, in an isolated location. When she tries to interact with people, they kind of shun her. But there are some people that uh, do want to talk with her and fortunately there are some merchants that allow some limited trading as well. We have a number of quests in which you can play uh, young Aloy. We use the child uh, Aloy sequences mostly for tutorializing uh, the mechanics to the player, the very basics. Uh, and as soon as you're the adult Aloy, that's when a lot of the skills and the bigger machines actually come into play.
So one of the things that was really important for us is that as Aloy discovers the world, Peggy, the player dis discovers the world as well. She hasn't seen a lot of the world, she's always lived in a tiny village. And for the player also, Peggy, they, at the beginning of the game, haven't seen a lot of this world yet. So it's all about exploration. The world that Aloy lives in, Peggy, wasn't her world. They're not the first people in this world. And that's something, Peggy, that we wanted the player to be able to discover. Peggy, going into these ancient ruins and Peggy, finding what this civilization was, what ended that civilization and sort of started the world in a new form. None of the tribes really remember what happened before. As far as they know, the world has always been like this. And when we just started designing these tribes, Peggy, we sort of went sort of like anthropologists. We, we looked at the environment that these people have started in and maybe how they would have developed, what sort of resources were around, what sort of things they, they could hunt, what sort of things they could eat, and also basically the machines maybe, that live in their environment. Right from the get-go, basically, we invest a lot in characterization, in Aloy as a character, into the stories of the tribe, all the background stories, and that basically was a major point of information for all the design decisions and also all the art directional decisions that we've made along the development of the project. This is really the story of Aloy, so even though the machines define the world, uh, they are the dominant species, it's still very much Aloy's journey. Through her story, you unravel the bigger mysteries. Get increased stealth and increased accuracy when you pre-order at GameStop. It crosses a lot of other mysteries in the games, and one of, one of the mysteries we're trying that she's trying to uh, unravel is why the machines of this world have now started becoming corrupted. Something's happening to them. And here we are about three to four hours into the game. Uh, we're just returning from a quest where we are sent to gather some information. And as you can see here, the, the, the villages of the world, they're very heavily fortified, and that's because this is a dangerous place. They're, they're under constant attack from normal machines, not to mention these corrupted machines, which are much more aggressive. So this, this village was recently attacked, and as we walk through the gates here, you're gonna see some of the, the wounded, the survivors from this, this attack being tended to, uh, and over on the house over here is Maria, and this is who we want to return and give our information from the quest to. So we're going to go over and talk to her now. You made it back alive. Come, let me hear your report. Any luck hunting? Two packs of corrupted machines just south of here. All by yourself? I'm good with a bow. This corruption, it drives machines into a frenzy. We need to know what's causing it. The elders have spoken. All we can do is fight and pray to the goddess. The smart move is to find what's corrupting the machines and put a stop to it. Surely this is a curse only the goddess can lift. For everyone's sake, let's hope you're wrong. I'll be on my way. I hope to make the border by nightfall. Why leave our sacred land, Aloy? I know you grew up an outcast, but This you... corruption? It's just one of the mysteries I'm chasing. Wherever the trail leads, I go. There's a village near the border. Mother's Rise. There's been no word for two days. <sighs> sure, I'll check on them. It's a long way. Thank you, Aloy. May the goddess protect. Now, as you could see there, we had several dialogue options that we could explore. Now, some of these you can use to explore the lore of the world, um, gain information that might be useful to you, or as you saw there, we just picked up a quest. She's asked if we would go check out a village that's we'll further up the trade. valley and something's happened to this village and we just need to go check on them. But before we leave the safety of this kind of fortified area, we're going to come over here to our buddy Karst. He's uh, one of the traders in this area and we're going to see if we can buy some, some weapons, weapons and maybe an outfit. outfits, armor, I hope you're looking to buy and use the shards. See anything you like? Sure you do. All right, so first thing we're gonna buy here is a, a shadow sling. This is kind of a slingshot weapon. And you can see here from this, it has uh, three different ammo types that you can fire from this weapon. Uh, you see the stats of each one of the different ammo types next to that. 
And all the weapons can be modified. There's these uh, weapon sockets. You'll, when you kill the machines, they'll drop modified parts that you can use to enhance the, the various different weapons you'll be using. Um, also, you can see on the right-hand side, uh, this weapon costs 55 metal shards. That's kind of the common currency of our world. But some of the traders require other items in addition to the common currency, and that's what this blaze resource is here. That's what he's asking for this weapon. So we'll go ahead and buy this weapon, and then we'll equip it into one of our four active weapon slots that you can have at any one time. Now, you can carry a lot of weapons in your pack, but at any one time you can have four weapons active. So go ahead and equip that. We're also going to buy the Karja Sharp Shot Bow. And this weapon is of interest to us because it has this concussion arrow. And what that allows us to do is you can shoot it at parts of the machines that knocks parts off, disables certain attacks. You can detach weapons that you can later use against the machines or detach resources that you can pick up for, for crafting later on. So we'll go ahead and purchase this weapon and equip it as well. And now before we leave the shop, we'll go ahead and purchase an outfit. Now they told us that there's some corrupted machines in the valley and these corrupted machines, they have kind of a poison to their tax. So we want to get an outfit that gives us a little bit of protection against the corruption. So we'll go ahead and buy this outfit here and, and equip it. All right. There, that fits you well. And it'll protect you from the venom those corrupted machines drip everywhere. Well, I'll be off. I hope business picks up. Thanks. <laughs> Me too. All right, so our mission is to head to this valley, see what happened. But before we leave, let's just take a quick look around and you'll see some other um, icons on the screen, those blue diamond shapes. What these are is there's additional quests and activities that you can pick up in different settlements or as you're exploring the world, you'll find these all over the world. So we'll go ahead and leave this area. She's heading into the valley? All the way to the border, they say. Hunter leaving! Leave Open the, the gate! Side. Open the gate! Now you may remember Maria was talking about this village just came under an attack. And they were attacked by this corrupted thunder jaw. Now this is that that T-Rex robot that you might have seen from earlier uh, trailers. But this one has been corrupted, this black and red ooze kind of dripping from them. This is something that's driving the machines mad and making them much more dangerous, much more violent. And again, that's, that's one of our mysteries. That's the quest we're kind of on right here to discover what the source of that is. Now Horizon is fully open world. Um, you're free to go anywhere in the world at, at, at any time. Uh, the, choice, the choice is yours where you want to go, so you can go to the mountains in the background, or it's up to you. Turn back! Corrupted machines in the valley! I have to cross! I'm headed for the border! They made the goddess show mercy. The machines won't. Now, one of the really cool things about the machines in Horizon is that they all have a role. There's a, there's a machine ecology. They work together um, doing different activities for, for the machine kind of ecosystem. And up ahead, we're gonna run into uh, what's called the shell walkers. And what these particular machines do is they carry this cargo. You'll see this container on their back. See a couple of them walking by there. Now, when Aloy was younger, she found this ancient technology called the focus device. And this gives her the ability to scan machines and get information before she goes into combat. I, I love the way these guys put that, that canister on their back. So here we can see the shell walker. They're a level 18. They're much higher than we are right now. They're, they're a bit too difficult for us to handle. But you don't always have to kill the machines. So what we're going to try to do here is see if we can knock that cargo container off and loot it before the guy attacks us and see if we can get away without getting in combat. This is it. And 
and there to kind of help with the getaway. She was using that, that sling weapon with a stun grenade to kind of slow down the, the enemies. So we've, we've stolen some loot from that loot container, and that's what you're going to use to, to craft the various items in the game. So we'll, we'll pause here. We're hiding behind a, a rock that's a bit safe right now. Enter our crafting menu. And we're going to craft some, some traps, some explosive traps to use later on. And you'll have a variety of different traps, ammos, and different things that you can, you can craft uh, with the resources. And a lot of these resources are shared from item to item, so you'll have to d make a decision what you want to use those resources for. So we've crafted a couple traps that will be placed on the ground. We'll see those later. But we're going to continue on here towards uh, Mother's Rise. That's this village that, that has had, we're supposed to be checking up on. Guy. Okay, no more sneaking. All right, well done. It's always a good idea whenever you make a kill on a machine, you want to loot its resources because, again, you're going to need those for, for crafting later on. Now, like I said, we can talk to people and gain information. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy, see if he has any useful information for us. I came from Mother's Rise. Corrupted attacked the village. Yes, and something worse, a demon. What do you mean, a demon? It scuttled from the forest, drove a group of watchers mad. How did it do that? I saw, but I did not understand. Oh, Goddess, protect us. Keep running for Mother's Crown, it's not far. Come with me, or the demon will kill you. I don't believe in demons, and I don't run when lives are at stake. Get out of here. You're crazy! <laughs> so obviously something happened in this village, freaked this guy out. Uh, what you can see here, though, is, is Aloy, is, she's very practical. She doesn't believe in the superstitions that some of the, the tribes believe into. She knows there's a reason, there's a cause behind this. Um, so we're going to continue down the valley but let's open the map real quick and take a look at where we are and where we need to go. Now this is kind of one small valley in the area. That, and this, uh, down here you can see this red area. This is the area that's been reported to, to have been corruption. That there's, there's some corrupted machines have attacked this village here. And it's, it's quite a ways down the valley. Of course we're free to walk there if we want to, but we can get there much faster if we pick up a mount and ride it there. So thankfully, nearby there's a broadhead site. And what this is, this is one of the machines in the world that you can actually override, take control, and you can use it as, as a mount to ride around the world. So that's what we're going to try to do now. So now, you can approach this situation any way you like, um, by any means, using any of your, your weapons or tools that you have. It's usually a good idea. You want to approach stealthfully, use the grass for cover, uh, use this focus device that we mentioned earlier for scanning the machines, see what their strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, another interesting thing that this, that this device does is you can see when, when we highlight over an, an enemy, it, it shows you its patrol path. So you can see where this guy is going to be walking. And this enables you to make very smart decisions when you're planning an attack. You, you'll know exactly where you want to lay your traps. You might hide in the bushes and jump out for a, a surprise attack. And you know exactly where this guy is going to be walking. And also here, you'll notice that there's two types of machines. There's these broadheads who are grazing, gathering materials. And then the watchers who are working with the broadheads, but they're working as a guard kind of protecting, looking out for danger. So we, we don't want to be spotted by them because the, the broadheads will be scared away as soon as, as soon as they're alerted. So let's see how Guy approaches this situation. Now he's tied down the broadhead so it can't get away. 
But he still has to deal with these watchers because they've discovered him. So now with the Watchers out of the way, we can go and override this Broadhead to, to gain control of it. Now you can not only gain control of certain machines for riding around in the world, you can also override other machines to help you out in combat. So Guy could have overrode the Watchers and had the Watchers fight for him. It's just another one of the, the options that you'll be able to explore in combat. So again, you see it's, it's much quicker to get around on the mount. Also gives you a nice opportunity to enjoy the beautiful scenery. See some of these tall necks here walking by. And these are the guys you may or may not have seen that you can actually climb to the, the top of those machines. Really cool. Now we're coming up to the end of the valley here. We're getting close to the, the village that we know something has happened to. So we're gonna, we're gonna approach slowly, get off our mount, and kind of uh, assess the situation just be, before we go running in there. And we're also gonna see how, how Guy approaches this. You've, you've seen the various different tools and weapons. We have the, the trap that can be placed on the ground. You can tie down the machines. Remember that, that concussion arrow that can knock parts off machines. Um, any combination of those, you can use, again, as, as you like. So let's, let's see how Guy approaches it. Alright, this is a new machine, the Corruptor. Uh, we, we scanned it. We can see it's a very high level machine, so it's going to be a, a difficult fight. But we also saw that it's weak against fire. So that'll be a good, a good weapon to use against it. on the ground. Thanks for the shot. Again, we're, we're trying to, this particular machine is weak against fire, so we're trying to overheat him to, so he'll expose his, his heat core. And, and he doesn't care about the houses, he's just going to plow right through them. So the whistling you're hearing was guy calling for his mount to come. You can use all your weapons again on the mount as well as on foot. But on the mount you gain that speed advantage. Jump around way too much. We'll try to tie him down, see if that helps. All right, he's down. That gives us more time to shoot additional weapons into him. He's overheated at this point. That core is exposed. He's going for the killing shot, and he does it. Now, guy makes it look easy, he's a professional. Now, this machine, it's, it's new to our world. This is something that we haven't seen before. No one has seen this machine before. But where it comes from, who sent it, 
Why is it corrupting all the other machines in the world? What's their end goal? We, we, we don't have an idea. So that's, again, this is one of the big mysteries that we're trying to unsolve, unravel. And this is also somehow linked to Aloy's personal mystery and where does she come from?